Hey everybody, this is Joe, and I'm coming to you from my Houston, Texas garden in zone 9A. And I thought I would give you a little tour of my flower pots. This is one of my very favorite ones right now. Uh, it's got this wonderful phlox, and oh, it had a hot pink vinca, which you can see has fallen to the ground, but it's beautiful. And then these super fun gomfrina. Let's see if I can find you a nice fresh flower. Look how sweet that is. And uh, the butterflies have just loved this. They've been all over it. Well, I've got a few little pots here just filling a gap because uh, I pulled out my jalapenos. They were covered in jalapenos, but then the leaf miners got to them. And so I pulled them all up. So this is just a little gap filler. I've got some rue for butterflies. This is a society garlic, which I'm having trouble making it bloom. And then a really cool purple elephant ear with sort of a red stem. And I've stopped uh, planting elephant ear in the ground. You can see I have this gigantic one here, and I used to pull up the little pups and share them, but now I've learned since that uh, elephant ears are very invasive. And so I want, you know, we want as few as we can that are non native. And if this got into a waterway, um, that could be really de detrimental to the ecosystem. So when I have too many, I pull them up, I lay them on the driveway until they're just completely dried up and dead, and then I'll put them in my compost. I don't want them sprouting in the compost. Hello, Mrs. Doubtfire. She's come to see us. She loves being on the camera. Well, I've got a couple of sort of hodgepodgey pots. Uh, this is one of them. I had some things in here, they died. I stuck other things in um, right before all the pumpkins and mums came out. I was able to get to the nursery and get some really great zinnias and petunias. And then this big tall thing is a um, purple uh, salvia that I meant to buy a different variety. And so I had already bought these and I thought, well, what am I gonna do with it? So I put it in here, it's probably gonna to be too tall, but that's okay. I've got a little vinca in here. And then one of the things I did, it, it, I just put it in here the other day, I saw in one of my local nurseries, a big pot and they had frog fruit planted in the pot and just hanging down, flowering all the way to the ground. And it was wonderful. Well, I've got a ton of frog fruit. So I just pulled some up. It's that every, you know, six inches it's got, um, roots on it. So it's very easy to propagate. I'll just pull it up and stick it somewhere else. So I'm hoping it'll fill that gap and be beautiful there. And then you can see I've started a bunch of seeds for the fall and a lot of these will overwinter. Um, I've got a lot of uh, pansies and violas. I've got zinnias. I've got cosmos. I've got a few uh, I'm trying fennel. I, I need fennel for my butterflies um, in case I get another round of uh, black swallowtail butterflies. And so I'm trying to grow it from seed and it's working out pretty well. And I didn't need any more basil, but this is called holy basil. Uh, so it's also called Tulsi. And the reason I picked it, basil grows so fast and those have big pink flower spikes. And I thought that would be a really fun thing um, to add to the fall border. And then another thing that's going over here, this is a uh, pipe vine that I've been growing from seed here. And I just, these will go in the ground, but I just put a bunch in a pot and I'll show you that in a minute. And then I haven't had a lot of luck propagating coleus, but this is one and here's another, and you can see an, yet another uh, dead one. That's mostly what I get when I try to propagate. I've got a few coleus. I trimmed one back really hard yesterday and I put the coleus in here um, and didn't water it. I just sort of spritzed it a little bit, really accidentally, I was watering something else. Um, just to see um, what would happen. I, they mostly have rotted for me. I thought, well, if I don't give them really wet soil, um, then 
maybe I'll have a chance. Some of them look great, some of them not so much. So we'll see how that goes. This is my husband's um, bonsai. These are little willows and bonsai and some things to put in the ground. These are, um, I got two different kinds of foxgloves and I'll put those in the ground. Uh, in Houston, it's really, you really can't grow them uh, from seed. It doesn't get cold enough for the first year, but if you buy them and plant them in the fall, in the spring, you'll get some nice flowers. Now I've got a few big succulents over here, this amazing, amazing um, aloe. Um, and it's, uh, I've had this for 25 years probably, and you just keep pulling out and giving away pieces. And the fewer you have in a pot, the bigger they'll get. You can have a pot this size with a million tiny ones. If you pull most of them out, you can have some really big ones. They just, it just depends on how big your pot is as to how big the plant will get. I've got my little airplane plants and a bunch of colanchos that are doing pretty well, but every once in a while I have a colancho that sort of does this. It sort of just dries up and looks shrivelly, and um, I just cut that part off. Well, you can see maybe why this is happening, but there's a little nice part. I'll probably try to save that. I don't know why it's coming out of the ground, but um, every time, every once in a while, I'll just have that kind of little weird die off. Here's another um, nice colancho that I cut basically down to here um, in the spring or in the, the summer really and um, it's come back out it was looking pretty ratty but it gave a really nice flower um, in the spring then I've got a lot of succulents here just again sort of a hodgepodge of succulents as well and um, one of my favorite little combos is this ghost plant. This plant has been around for a long time in this pot, but it's got a couple of little, I must have planted some little different, different succulents um, at some point and a few of them survived. And so they're sort of dotted in here. And then I've got a third plant in here that's just this super invasive stuff that, you know, came in on, rode in to town on some other pot. And um, I just pull it out constantly. But uh, it looks okay in this pot, pot, so I leave it in the pot. But if I see it on the ground, it's the same kind of thing. I pull it out. If you throw it on the ground, it's going to root. So I'll pull it and let it sit on the driveway and, and fry until it's dead, dead. Then I'll put it in a compost pile. Now this, I had some um, Bidens in here until 30 minutes ago, but they were full of spider mites. And so I pulled them out and I will not put them in my compost. I'll put them in the trash. And I just went to the store and came home and planted this. This is a little purple phlox. And this has been here for a while. This is a, a really pretty uh, super tunia, but this I just found and I couldn't live without it. It is the coolest thing. I've got the name of it. Um, super tunia Picasso in purple. And the fact that it's got these sort of reddish purple uh, flowers with bright green tips on the flat and the edge of the petals, I just thought it was the coolest plant, and so I had no intention of buying more petunias, and yet, here you can see I lost my head. Um, and I've got a lot of little, little, again, random things. I've got a uh, zinnia here and another purple uh, salvia that's going to be too big, but I bought the wrong thing, so it ended up in a pot. And then this little lobelia that's super pretty, and uh, this one looks terrible because I just dug it up and move it, moved it six inches and stuck it back in the ground. And here I put another little clipping of that frog fruit, hoping that it'll come and hang down um, over the side of the pot. Well, I'll take you over to my little succulent theater. I'm gonna keep my I don't know if y'all do that. I'll keep my tag before, so I can write it down in my little garden journal so I can remember, or just tape it in, so I can remember what I love the most. So here's another amazing aloe right here. It is way too small for that pot. It's gotten huge in the last year, um, and it's already got a little pup on the side. But you can see this huge bloom, bloom spike. This is the second one this year. I did not expect this. So they're just just starting to it haven't quite even opened up but um i just think that was the coolest little surprise coolest big surprise so it's the it's the star of the show right now in the uh 
in the succulent theater. And I've got one of the things that does really well in Houston. Every time I plant one of these, it does really well. You know, I have things die. You can see I have things die all the time. And these succulents they either love it or they hate it. And um, so I have some that do really well. And sometimes like this little gray will do really well in one place. But over here, I keep trying to get it. It's like, see, it's got little tiny red roots on it, pinkish red roots. I can't for the life of me get that. I just stuck that in there the other day because it keeps, you know, looking terrible. So you never know. And here's one of my uh, little ghost plants. I just laid a broken leaf down and it's got little plants already. I'm trying the same thing here. I'm not entirely sure. This has been sitting here for a million years and it, I don't know if that's the beginning of a, a little plant or not, but I'm hoping so. I've got cool jade plant going and this funky gray and purpley splotched one and this is one of my favorite things um, about long funky looking leaves and kind of reddish stems I have another one that's got a little more reddish stem on it these are little fuzzy ones I, this one likes to be really dry and I don't know why it's looking so terrible, but maybe I watered it too much. And I've got all kinds of little things, you know, you try them out and you see what does well. That's a Colancho. I usually just buy the ones I think look cute or look similar to ones that are already doing well. It's like I can tell, I think this is pretty new, but I took a bet on it because it's real waxy looking. And here's something I've had for a while that's also really waxy looking. And so I gave it a try. It, it, it tends to go that way, where if a certain kind does well in my yard, I try to buy things that have a similar leaf structure. Um, and you know, sometimes I have a good look. This has been so beautiful all for the whole month. It's been blooming and blooming. It's so pretty. Let's see if I can get it in focus there sort of orangey with a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of yellow in there it doesn't want to cooperate but it's so pretty and it's got this huge floppy bloom spike but that was a nice little uh, nice little treat another thing I've got around the yard is um, scented geraniums and these were so gangly and goofy a couple of months ago I didn't really know what to do but I left them and now I didn't trim them back. I was afraid I would kill them, but now they're just sort of wispy and pretty and they, you know, move around in the wind a little bit. And I just, I am just really liking that I left them like this. And so it's ended up being one of my favorite little things. I've got another scented geranium over here. This big one is new because whatever was there before died. And I've got a little sort of trailing one here. And then this little guy, I don't know. He doesn't look very happy, does he? But, um, but I, it's been fun and I'm still trying to find a peppermint flavored scented geranium. I know it exists because I had one a long time ago, but I haven't seen one in the, in the uh, nursery any time recently. Well, I've got, whoops. Colanchos tend to do really well. So I've got a little dwarf colancho here. That one over there is a dwarf colancho as well. Again, the big, big wide flapped uh, leaves do well in Houston for me. Aloes do well in Houston. Here's another one that's got a, a little bit of a uh, maroon tinge to it. Um, and I really like that. And then here's a little fat one. I love him as well. And then I have one more. Oh, then the, the giant, and then I've got the other two um, that are that just do really well for me. I've got two pots of uh, daylilies. I lost my head, bought too many daylilies online, and then just didn't have enough sun to put them in. And so I put them here as a stopgap and I'll find a place for him. And here I've got a sun patient that just hates me. I, no matter what I do, sun, shade, half sun, half shade, uh, if I fertilize it, don't fertilize it, 
I don't know why it won't get any bigger. It's looked this bad for like six months. So if you have advice on sun patients, please comment for me. One of the great things that I bought just a couple of months ago, it's all closed up, is a purse lane. It's mostly pink and then every once in a while it spits out a little sort of orange one, but it has done really well. You can see I broke it off here. I dropped something on it. I knew it looked bad. Now I'm noticing it on the camera is that I dropped something on it, but I will try, actually I'll put that in the ground and I wonder if I could get a new plant out of that. And then stuck in here with it is um, some autumn sage. Um, oh gosh, what's that called? It'll come to me. Anyway, it's doing pretty well. I didn't like the wet Houston uh, ground last year. And so it's done better in the pot. Well, let me take you back. I've got a few things back here to show you. I've been dealing with um, something weird happening to my ivy geraniums. And so I cut them all in this pot, cut them all back. I have a squirrel that keeps digging in them constantly. I love, I'm loving all the green uh, moss on this pot. And then again, I've got a couple of hodgepodge. I just wanted, I wanted color back here that I could see from the house. And also I wanted as many things as I can for bees and butterflies. Another scented geranium. I love that gray. And this pot is so old school. This was from my parents. And uh, my dad would be 104. 103 this year and this is back in the day when you repaired a pot so you can see he has taken this broken pot and and you know wired it back together and um, and I'll just keep it forever I love it and that just makes me think of my dad you grew up in the depression you fix things and you don't throw them away I've got these wonderful begonias um, that are still doing really well it's a dragon leaf begonia and then this um, is that coleus that I just whacked off um, yesterday and it was just out of control. And so I've clipped that back and it looks pretty good out here. Um, and then I've got a few things. I love these little caladiums. They're so dainty. I think they're that small because I put them in a tiny pot um, and I have to water it all the time because it's so small. Here's another dragon wing begonia. One of the things I've been doing is turning my pots. Every Tuesday, I turn my pots a quarter turn to try to get all the way around be to be pretty. And uh, I've just been doing it for a couple of weeks, but it seems to be making a difference. And of course, again, the star of the show out here is this fantastic caladium. It's looked that good all, all summer long. I have to water it every single day. And this, I just planted this. I just bought this little pot, which is so cute. I have another one like this. This is that pipe vine that I grew from seed. And I just think it's so fluffy and cute. And I thought I would try to grow it in a pot instead of in the ground because I am not having a lot of luck uh, growing that in the ground. And I've got some more ivy geraniums. Um, that are doing okay, and the more I've been turning them, the better they have looked all the way around. And then this uh, is that bubblegum supertunia, and I'm hoping that it's getting enough sun out here to be really pretty and, and, and hang down over that, uh, over the side. And then I'm going to show you, I have one thing on the, on the patio I walked past, but let me show you this really quickly. This is another kind of pipe vine, and I'm trying it in the ground. Everybody seems to have a lot of luck uh, growing this in pots, and I have not had a lot of luck growing it in the ground, and so uh, I thought I'd give it a shot in the pot. So I've got two things going there. Here's my olive tree that I transplanted, and so it's got a big old heavy bag of, uh, of crushed granite holding it up so it doesn't flop over. And then I wanted to show you one more thing I forgot to show you up here. I'm going to walk kind of fast. 
through the garden. You can see I've got pots everywhere of things I have bought in the last two days that have not gotten planted yet. With this turning of the pots, excuse my sort of trashy patio, with the turning of the pots, I have noticed this beautiful begonia, uh, so gorgeous, but very leggy. And I trimmed a piece off, but also I turned the pot. It's in complete shade, but this is the bright side. And you can see how this long piece has just contorted itself to face the light. And the other thing that happened was all this new growth. It was just getting more light. It's not getting direct sun or anything, but this is the side that the light was able to get to now because I turned the pot and there's new growth and new growth there. And I, I was really fascinated by this and uh, it inspired me to, to keep tr turning things around, but also to get that new growth, I'm thinking about maybe trimming this back a lot. And I was able to actually root one piece. I'm very proud of myself. Uh, because they, I have had a hard, hard time rooting begonias. Um, usually if I give the cutting to my sister, she'll root it and bring it back to me when it's beautiful. She is magic, but I am not magic. And then I will just end on the prettiest begonia. Y'all have seen this in other videos, I'm sure, but it's worth another look. Fantastic. Well, I hope you guys are having a fun with your flower pots and uh, hope you're doing what I'm doing, refreshing uh, the pots that you have with some color for the, um, for the fall and to keep up having some flowers for the butterflies um, and the bees that'll be with us for several more months now. Take care. Y'all have a great week. Bye-bye.